Eric, and thanks for everybody coming out this afternoon. Uh, before I get started, I'll just uh, rattle on a little bit about what Eric's saying here. In 2003, there was three local guys, myself, Scott Drever, and Barney Magnuson. We were sitting around a small table in a, it was a, a closet, I think, on Granville and, Duns and uh, Davies on the corner there. And uh, we had an opportunity to start Silvercrest. The foundation, that day we spoke about what the foundation was going to be. And I'm proud to say we stuck to our guns. We wanted to make money ourselves and for our shareholders. We did a lot of that. And we wanted to have fun. And we did a lot of that too. So uh, this is a lot of this uh, is very ceremonial to me right now because it's passing the, uh, the, the baton over to me. So I was chief operating officer and president at one time of Silvercrest Mines, and uh, Scott Drever was chief operating officer. He's here today, and Barney's here. I'd like to give both of these guys a big hand because they've done a tremendous job. <laughs> Wave! <laughs> Great. Well, that, that got done. And, and Scott's not retiring yet. Uh, I wanted to roast him at some point, but I can't do that yet. He's going to continue on as a director. And Barney is currently CFO uh, of uh, Silvercrest Metals. So on to bigger and better things. Uh, as Eric said, we did merge with uh, First Majestic. We closed that last week. I timed that perfectly for Eric and this conference. <laughs> and we're trading tomorrow. Uh, we hope to open, or we will open. And uh, the TSX call, uh, called us yesterday and said, well, what price do you want to set? Well, we'll just go with cash value. So it's about 25 cents that we'll open tomorrow. Uh, the typical cautionary statement. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've done this for several years now in presentations. I am a qualified person. Uh, I'm an insider. I have a vested interest. Therefore, disqualify everything I say and go research it yourself. Back again, uh, Silvercrest, uh, Silvercrest Metals. I decided to keep the name and the logo. That was part of this deal. I thought that it was very important to continue on with the team and the tradition. We got the office, also uh, equipment, some of the people rolling out into the Silvercrest Metals. Uh, we're well funded. Uh, we have in the bank over $5 million Canadian. And I'll get into a little bit how we're going to spend that. A, one, a lot of the success behind Silvercrest Mines, we're just rolling right into uh, the, new, the new company, Silvercrest Metals. That success is boots on the ground, a responsible business model. I'm, I'm glad Greg went before I did because he was talking about the phased approach. I think we were the leaders there in 2008 when we decided to do Santa Elena as a phased approach. It was a great way to do business. We'll continue with that with the new company. Uh, so there, there's, there's a lot of this team that's moving right in and that emphasis, as you can see, the statement that I'm making here is we're looking again at uh, exploration, development, financing, construction, and production over the next few years. So we're, we have been very aggressive uh, to reemphasize what Greg was saying. You know, they had a very tight schedule in doing their, their, their work in Atreya. So we're, we're doing the same thing in Mexico, uh, Santa Elena mine for Silvercrest mines. It, we went from zero to uh, 360 overnight with that, that mine. We did discovery finance, uh, construction and production in about three years. So it can be done in a favorable climate, a favorable district jurisdiction. I love Mexico, great elephant hunt country. Uh, I originally started my career in Nevada. I still see Mexico as having huge opportunity uh, from a geologic standpoint. Uh, everybody asks me all the time, what about the crime and the drugs? And well, you just don't go into those areas and you have common sense and you're, you're good. So I've been in and out of Mexico for 20 years and never had a problem. So. There's your team, uh, myself. It's all the same directors. I said, can I get rid of some of you guys? And it says, we love the story. So well, we, we want to continue. So. We'll, we'll continue on with the same, same uh, directors as we had. So here's the corporate structure. So 22 million shares out. Uh, of that 22 million is basically Silvercrest shareholders, Silvercrest Mines, old Silvercrest, coming into new Silvercrest, and First Majestic. They have a 9.9% interest in the company. They brought in 
some properties into this package too and got some value there. Uh, to be determined, so um, look at us tomorrow, see how we're trading, and that will set the, the share price and the, and the market cap. So here's our properties, a quick snapshot of the map. Uh, I kind of listed them in order of I thought the priorities uh, should be. So Las Chispas, i got a slide coming up, I'll tell you about that. These are basically just rolled out of the, the package of, of Silvercrest mines, the old Silvercrest and the new Silvercrest, and uh, the one property out of Durango the, from First Majestic. So here's Las Chispas. I think right now it's not taking the forefront. Cruz de Mayo is an old property. It had a NI43-101 report on it. We used it for the qualifying report uh, and qualifying property to, to kick the, the listing off for tomorrow. Uh, I, I, that won't take the front and center. Uh, Las Chispas should uh, moving forward here. It's something that uh, I worked on for about a year and a half. Uh, it is a old silver district. It's never been drilled. Uh, there's 14 epithermal veins. Uh, it has had uh, a lot of historic production and it's just conveniently located in the same neighborhood as the Santa Elena mine. Uh, so we know all about this, this district, we know about the communities, we're using the same community, and when we went in to, to do the deal with uh, First Majestic, they said, well, what about this little property up here? And I said, well, that's not on the table. I said, that's going to go into Spinco. I've, I've spent a lot of time putting this together. And they said, well, we like this. Will you, will you kill the deal if we don't get it? And I said, yes. You know, this is going to go into Spinco. You, you, you can't have it. So... So I'm quite excited about uh, Las Chispas, uh, great elephant hunt country. You can see the numbers there, uh, past production, to, uh, 120 million ounces of silver, 200,000 ounces of gold, all above the water table. Uh, this was shut down in the 20s, 1920s. There is over 10 kilometers of underground workings above the water table. So I'm mostly interested in what's below the water table. Uh, and we're looking at for the opportunity to get in there and do some drilling. Great infrastructure, same neighborhood as Silvercrest, as, as Santa Elena. So if you know the story of Silvercrest, old Silvercrest, we love infrastructure, we love things simple. This is just another one of those simple things that you just got to go drill. Uh, Wasabas, this is also in the neighborhood in Sonora. So I like this one because it looks like Santa Elena. So what a repeated issue here. <laughs> you can see the trucks here. You can drive right up to it. It's about a kilometer long. That's the vein system there. There's multiple veins. This is an epithermal system again. It looks just like Santa Elena, uh, which we had a lot of success on. So this, if it was in my Nevada days and still in Nevada day, would have been drilled about 10 times by now. This has never been drilled. Again, look at the opportunities that are still out there in Mexico, even as of today. There's great opportunities to make discoveries. Cruz de Mayo, I had to put this in because it is the qualifying property. So, <laughs> And Scott and Barney love for me to talk about Cruz de Mayo. <laughs> so it actually was one of our first properties that we picked up uh, when we came into Mexico. And... Uh, it's become the, the orphan child now of Silvercrest mines, so we put it into Silvercrest metals. We'll do a little bit more work on this. There is some potential. It has a small resource. Uh, it has a much larger lower grade resource. This current resource that we've run, as you can see here, uh, you've got about a million tons of higher grade silver right at the surface. Uh, there's a much larger one at, at a much lower uh, cutoff grade or higher metal price. So, so this is the one we got from uh, First Majestic. So this is immediately adjacent to the uh, uh, Santa Cruz silver discovery, the Gavilanes. Actually, the vein system goes right onto this property. So another epithermal system, lots of potential here. Uh, we'll look at uh, boots on the ground. We'll get into this. There's, there's a lot of smoke, a lot of grade at the surface here. So why us? Uh, again, proven track record. We've had a great ride for 12 years. I expect to look forward to another great uh, ride, at least for me, for another 12 years. Uh, I want to have make some more money, make shareholders some more money, and have some more fun. I'm still pretty young, 
So I'm looking for that opportunity. Uh, strong cash position. So what we're going to do with the cash right now that we have, uh, we're very conservative with our cash. It's drill to kill. So I'm not monkeying around here looking at, well, should we drill it because it looks too good and maybe we shouldn't drill it? I'm out here to drill it. We're going to give it our best shot. We're going to take Las Chispas and Wasabas right out of the chute here, get some drills out on the ground, spend a few hundred thousand dollars of the bank account, see if we got a major discovery. If we don't, it's a distraction. Get rid of it. Move on. Okay? So that's what we're going to do with our money over the next six months. See if we got a discovery. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a big discovery. Grade is king. I'm looking for grade. Also, we're going to spend a little bit of money to look at acquisitions. So I got over 20 years of experience in Mexico right now. I've looked at hundreds, if not a thousand properties in Mexico. I know where the cherries are. I got a team of guys that know where the cherries are. We're going to start picking these off. It's a great time to do it. I think we're at the bottom of the market. I think we're going to be muddling around here for another year to year and a half trying to figure out, look at these little mini peaks that, that we're fighting to get. But I believe, you know, in the two-year plan of just compiling these acquisitions, dirt cheap. I mean, I, Las Chispas, I'm buying for less than I bought Santa Elena, you know, 10 years ago. So these are the kind of assets that are coming available right now. You need to take these opportunities. And as, as a CEO, look at those and get them into the portfolio for next to nothing. Just uh, last, last comment here. So we do have some scheduled events that are coming up. Um, we'll want to be out and do a little bit of marketing and get the story out. Uh, so you can see we're going to be in California and San Francisco. I'm also going to be running around Vancouver in December. I've asked uh, my... Uh, VP of communications to line some stuff up to go see some brokers start getting the, the word out even more so Thanks again. Thanks you very much and and again uh, Thanks to Scott and Barney for all of their effort up to this point and uh, looking for uh, uh, Rise and tide that's coming that I think uh, pretty soon here. Thank you